as we're coming to the end of 2023, it's time to start planning how you will excel in English next year. And I have partnered with the incredible online language school Lingoda to bring you an amazing offer. Have you ever heard of the Lingoda Language Sprint? The Sprint Challenge is an intensive 60-day course designed to help you build daily language learning habits and also stay motivated. You can choose to take 30 classes or 60 classes in a two-month period. And if you complete every single class, you will get 50% of your money back or more in free classes. It's an incredible offer for the most dedicated learners. The next Lingoda Language Sprint starts on December 27th and I really encourage you all to consider joining now. Use the code THINKINGPOD or click my link in the description to sign up now and get $25 or €20 Euros off your deposit. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. Who was William Shakespeare? Why is he so famous? And did he really invent 1,700 English words and phrases? Let's discuss this on today's episode of Thinking in English. You can find the full transcript linked in the description of this podcast or over on the Thinking in English blog it's free. Here is today's vocabulary list. Classics. Classics. Works of literature that are considered of the highest quality and lasting significance. For example, many students study Shakespeare's classics, such as Romeo and Juliet and Hamlet. Iconic. Iconic. Widely recognised and admired, representing a symbol or characteristic. For example, Shakespeare is perhaps the most iconic English writer. Playwright. Playwright. A person who writes plays. For instance, William Shakespeare, a renowned playwright, wrote numerous plays that continue to be performed worldwide. Feud. Feud. A prolonged and bitter argument or dispute. As in, the Montague and Capulet feud in Romeo and Juliet serves as a central conflict in the play. Popularised. Popularised. Made widely known and accepted. As in, Shakespeare popularised many words and phrases still in use today. Works. Works. Literary creations or compositions, such as plays and poems. As in, Shakespeare's works encompass a wide range of genres, from tragedies like Macbeth to comedies like A Midsummer's Night's Dream. Sonnet. Sonnet. A specific form of poem that typically consists of 14 lines. For example, one of Shakespeare's most famous sonnets, Sonnet 18, begins with the line, Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Giant. Giant. Used metaphorically to signify immense influence and significance in the world. For example, William Shakespeare is often referred to as a literary giant. There are many famous figures in British literature. Charles Dickens, the author of classics like A Christmas Carol and Oliver Twist. J.R.R. Tolkien, the mind behind The Lord of the Rings. Jane Austen, who wrote classics including Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility and Emma. Perhaps the most famous and iconic of all British writers is William Shakespeare. Shakespeare's plays and poems are still studied today by schoolchildren across the UK, watched and enjoyed by audience in theatres, 
and known around the world. But did you know that Shakespeare's impact goes beyond the beauty of his language? He was a vocabulary-making machine. Estimates vary, which we'll talk about in a, a little later in this episode, but many sources online will tell you that William Shakespeare invented 1,700 English words. Many common words and phrases that are now used every single day were either invented or first used in print or popularised by Shakespeare. Maybe you are a critic of movies and food. Well, Shakespeare first used the word critic. If you are generous, you could support Thinking in English on Patreon and you would be following Shakespeare's definition of generous. And the next time you feel lonely, Shakespeare was apparently the first to use the word lonely in English. Today, I want to take a deeper look at Shakespeare. I'll first give you a brief introduction to the man and his famous works, and then we'll take a look at his prolific habit of using new words. So, who was William Shakespeare? William Shakespeare was born in April 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon, a small and quaint market town in England. If you like Shakespeare and are fortunate enough to visit the UK, I'd recommend a trip to Stratford-upon-Avon. It is a popular tourist town and full of Shakespeare-based attractions. Born to John and Mary Shakespeare, William grew up in a modest household. Little is known about his childhood, but it is believed that he attended the local grammar school. His father was a glove maker, a person who makes gloves, but also held a number of roles in the local town. Shakespeare was also the oldest surviving child of his parents. These two factors meant it was possible, or more likely, for his father to be able to send him to school. At school, he would have acquired a solid foundation in Latin and classical literature. When he turned 18, Shakespeare married the 26-year-old Anne Hathaway, not to be confused with the current Hollywood star. She was already pregnant, so the marriage was rushed through. William and Anne are thought to have had three children. Between the years of 1585 and 1592, nothing is known about Shakespeare's life. But by 1592, we know he had moved to London and had started to build his reputation. He entered the world of acting and soon became associated with the Lord Chamberlain's Men, a popular acting company. His exceptional skills as an actor and a playwright quickly brought him some fame and popularity, and he soon became a sought-after figure in London's theatrical scene. His writing career can be divided into three periods, the early, middle and late years. In the early years, he crafted comedies such as A Midsummer Night's Dream and Twelfth Night, showcasing his wit and language. The middle years saw the emergence of tragedies like Hamlet and Othello, exploring the complexities of human nature and the consequences of ambition. And in the later years, he delved into darker themes with plays like King Lear and Macbeth. Beyond his plays, Shakespeare also wrote a collection of 154 sonnets. Sonnets are a specific form of poem that are short and often used to express love and deep emotions. In the year 1613, a fire at the Globe Theatre led Shakespeare to semi-retire back to Stratford-upon-Avon. He spent his final years there, passing away on April 23rd, 1616, at the age of 52. I could go into a lot more detail about Shakespeare and his life, but I think this short biography should give you a good idea about the man. Now, let's take a quick look at a few of his most famous plays. 
Shakespeare is credited with writing a total of 39 plays. These plays can be broadly categorised into three genres, tragedies, comedies and histories. Some of his most well-known works include Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Macbeth, Othello, A Midsummer Night's Dream and Henry V, among others. In addition to his plays, Shakespeare also wrote 154 sonnets and several longer poems. Romeo and Juliet Romeo and Juliet is a tragedy that tells the story of two young lovers from Verona, Italy, whose families, the Montagues and Capulets, are engaged in a long-standing feud. Despite the rivalry between their families, Romeo Montague and Juliet Capulet fall deeply in love and secretly marry. The play explores themes of love, fate and the consequences of family arguments. Even today, the story is immensely popular. Director Baz Luhrmann's 1996 adaptation of Romeo and Juliet brought a modern twist to the classic tale with a contemporary setting and soundtrack and the popular musical West Side Story, which is set in 1950s New York, reimagines the feud between the Jets and the Sharks, echoing the Montague and Capulet conflict, and the love story between Tony and Maria is similar to the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. Hamlet Hamlet is a tragedy that revolves around Prince Hamlet of Denmark, After the sudden death of his father, Hamlet discovers that his uncle, Claudius, has married his mother and seized the throne. Haunted by his father's ghost, Hamlet grapples with questions of revenge, mortality and existentialism. The play is known for its psychological depth and complex characters. Most famously, the Disney classic movie, The Lion King, is inspired by the story of Hamlet. The story and relationship between the lions in the movie has a lot of similarities to the tale of Hamlet. Macbeth Macbeth is a tragedy that follows the ambitious Macbeth, a Scottish general, and his descent into madness and tyranny. Encouraged by the prophecies of three witches and spurred on by his wife, Lady Macbeth, Macbeth commits regicide to become king, so he kills the king. However, guilt and paranoia consume him, leading to a series of tragic events. As well as the numerous modern film, TV and theatre adaptions of Macbeth, the 1957 Japanese movie, Throne of Blood, by renowned director Akira Kurosawa, is heavily influenced by Shakespeare's story. It is set in feudal Japan and explores themes of ambition and betrayal. So now we know a little more about Shakespeare and his famous plays, let's get to the core question. How many words did Shakespeare invent? One popular idea attributes a staggering 1,700 words to Shakespeare, suggesting that he either invented or introduced them to the English vocabulary. These words range from everyday terms like bedroom and manager to words like obscene and rant. However, the accuracy of this claim has been the subject of scholarly debate. Different word counting methodologies or methodologies for finding word origins yield varying results. Early estimates by Alfred Hart in 1942 proposed that Shakespeare was the first user of about 3,200 words. Over the years, experts have presented figures ranging from more than 2,000 to around 1,200 to over 1,600 words. One factor in this is that early attempts by dictionaries to find the origins of words were done by hand. Today, we take the internet and massive amount of information at our fingertips for granted, 
But imagine when first editions of dictionaries were being made. They had to search themselves for the earliest mentions of words in literature. And Shakespeare's plays are some of the most well-known pieces of early English literature. The dictionary researchers naturally use Shakespeare a lot. Recent studies, such as those conducted by linguistics professor Jonathan Culpepper, have also questioned the claims that Shakespeare invented 1,700 words. Culpepper suggests that Shakespeare may have recorded around 400 genuinely new words. While this figure may seem modest compared to earlier estimates, it would still be the most by any single person. In essence, while the exact number of words credited to Shakespeare may remain uncertain, his influence on the English language is undeniable. As we've discussed, even if Shakespeare didn't necessarily invent every word he is credited with, he certainly played a major role in popularising many terms. Let's take a look at a few examples. Alligator. It might surprise you, but one of the earliest examples of the word alligator in English can be found in Romeo and Juliet. And in his needy shop a tortoise hung, an alligator stuffed and other skins of ill-shaped fishes. An alligator is a large carnivorous reptile closely related to the crocodile. Now, Shakespeare didn't completely make this word up himself. It comes from the Spanish term el lagarto de indias, meaning lizards of the Indies or lizards of the Americas, which then became alligato in Spanish. However, Shakespeare is often credited with using the word in its modern English form alligator for the first time, rather than the Spanish form. Bedroom. Where do you sleep? Probably most likely, in a bedroom. A bedroom is a room for sleeping, typically furnished with a bed. Interestingly, this word, as a single compound noun, didn't really exist in English until Shakespeare. The earliest usage comes in the play A Midsummer's Night's Dream. Then by your side no bedroom me deny, for lying so, Hermia, I do not lie. However, Shakespeare actually uses the word bedroom slightly differently here. He means the literal space in the bed that you have for sleeping. Foul-mouthed. Do you swear a lot? Do you often use obscene or rude words? We can describe people like this as foul-mouthed. Foul has a few meanings in English, but generally means disgusting or offensive. So if you are foul-mouthed, your mouth, or I guess the words that come out of your mouth, are disgusting. Shakespeare first used this phrase in Henry IV. He speaks most vilely of you, like a foul-mouthed man as he is, and said he would cudgel you. Inaudible. If you can't be heard, or it is impossible to hear you, we can describe this as inaudible. The prefix in negates the word audible, makes it the opposite. Shakespeare used this word in his play All's Well That Ends Well. For we are old, and on our quickest degrees the inaudible and noiseless foot of time steals ere we can affect them. What is nice here is that Shakespeare actually defines the word immediately by saying noiseless. Wild goose chase. A wild goose chase is an idiom that describes a pointless search for something. It tends to mean that you will or are wasting a lot of time doing something. Shakespeare used this idiom in the play Romeo and Juliet. Nay, if thy wits run the wild goose chase I have done, for thou hast more of the wild goose than one of thy wits, I am sure, and I have in my whole five. These were just five of the hundreds of English words credited to Shakespeare. If you want to check out some more words, I'll leave a few links to other articles in the transcript. 
Shakespeare is also incredibly difficult to read for even for native English speakers. For myself, it's confusing. That's why we study it at school and most people still don't understand Shakespeare. So if you'd like to read some Shakespeare, I'll also put a few links to graded readers, so books for English learners, um, that look at some of Shakespeare's plays. I think there's a few for Romeo and Juliet and Macbeth and maybe even Hamlet. I'll put some links in the transcript. So here is today's final thought. William Shakespeare was a literary giant. Hundreds of years after his death, he is still celebrated for classics like Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet and Macbeth. His plays and poems are still performed, read and studied today around the world. And the themes and storylines he created can still be seen in popular movies and shows. His influence is not just felt in literature, but in the English language itself. While experts still debate the exact count, ranging from a conservative 400 to a more ambitious 1,700, Shakespeare influenced our vocabulary and popularised hundreds of words and phrases. Have you ever read or seen a Shakespeare play? Who is the most influential writer in your language? Does your language have an equivalent to William Shakespeare? Let me know by leaving a comment on Spotify, reaching out on social media like Instagram, or subscribing to my Patreon and messaging me there, or commenting on Discord. Uh, That's the best place to message me at the moment. But thank you everyone for listening to today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, there is always a free transcript available on my blog, thinkinginenglish.blog. I still get comments from people saying, where's the transcript? I thought the transcript was free. It is free. It's just on my website. Usually the first thing on the website when you go there. Um, So thank you all for listening and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.